Here we go again. This is Lady Victoria Sackville West, a friend of the Prince and Princess of Wales. She frequently visited their home but was shocked by the behaviour of the Marlborough House set. So she was a bit of a prude. And then this lady is Millicent, the fourth Duchess of Sutherland, the half-sister of Daisy, the fifth Countess of Warwick, who actually owned this castle. And there's their manservants coming to read them the menu of what's for dinner tonight. Because they didn't really have much to do except eat and party and hunt and shoot and fish and mm. fireplace. Beautiful though, you know. The carvings on the wall and the ceilings. So here we've got Lord Brooke, Leopold Greville, Winston Churchill and Spencer Cavendish. So the one in the middle there is Winston Churchill, a young, a very young Winston Churchill. That's Lord Brooke, the fifth Earl. The eldest child of the fifth Earl and Countess of Warwick. He sustained injuries during the Battle of the Somme. And that's Spencer Cavendish. And he returned to his role as a war correspondent heading to Russia in 1917. Do you know, I just love the way the rooms are set out, the sofas. Lord Brooke was a man that wanted everywhere. You could almost talk to these people, couldn't you? Look. When he passed away after years of physical and psychological suffering. library you could almost come in here and say let's have a cake This is like Donna's front room, do you love books? Where are they? Hang on. This is the servant testing the water, the bath water. Got the sink over there, the washstand, towel rail. I don't know what that is underneath. Oh, maybe that's the loof and it's just, I don't know. And that's the bath, the claw foot bath. I bet these servants hated the wealth then. This is how I want my bedroom, Jim. Mm. There's a servant on the floor, look. The 
of your pet mistress. Daisy Greville is the most infamous Countess of Warwick in the castle's history. Infamous. She married Francis Greville in 1881, and oh. together they led Warwick Castle into an era of extravagant society. <laughs> yeah, they were naughty, apparently. Daisy Greville. Nay, Francis Evelyn Daisy Maynard was known as Daisy since childhood. She became the fifth Countess of Warwick in 1893. Daisy enjoyed hosting many parties, including the 1895 Powder Ball and the 1898 Royal Weekend Party. So there's Daisy. And there's one of Daisy's servants. And there's another of Daisy's servants. And you saw the third one getting the bath ready for her. What a lie. Love it. Oh. That's that person we just saw down there, whatever his name was. He's gazing over at that room where Daisy is. It's her husband. He's got a smaller room than she's got. This is um, Francis Greville, the fifth Earl of Warwick. Francis succeeded his father George as Earl of Warwick in 1893. Whilst his wife was an excellent hostess, who we saw in the other room, Francis took a minor role in the entertaining of their guests. Look at his jacket, his smoking jacket, and his cigar. Oh, Francis, were you a party pooper? Oh, paper. And there's his servant, he's having his bath over there by the fire. He's got a much smaller room than his wife that we just saw. Much smaller. The chain is long. It's a high bed, Jimmy. It is thanks to the Dowager Countess and her husband, George Greville, that the apartments were rebuilt and refurbished in the aftermath of this terrible incident. The Great Hall was rebuilt in the Gothic style, whilst the apartments got a unique makeover. Mm, they had a fire. The library was hand painted and took on an Italian Renaissance style. The music room was distinctly. The bed has. And the cannibal bedroom was I thought they were real people then for a minute. The layout of the rooms was altered by architect Anthony Salvin to incorporate a single wall. This is Lady the Anne. The family lived in the private apartment. Lady Anne Greville. When the castle was sold by David Greville. The Dowager Countess, 1829 to 1903. Lady Anne Greville was the fourth Countess of Warwick until her husband died in 1893. She then became known as the Dowager Countess. So she was the Dowager Countess and, Gra and Daisy was the Countess. That's how they worked. And here she is, all in black. Oh my goodness, look at her face. She does not look a happy person, does she? Oh, she had her nose pushed out, didn't she? Look at the bell ring. I wonder if it worked. So she's got the maid doing her hair. Yeah, I wonder how they felt. Look, this woman. In December 1871, a great fire struck in the great to this woman doing her hair. Castle. I wonder how they both felt. The waited. And the waited upon. But two of their children, Lady Eva and the Honourable Sidney, had to be rescued from the nursery by the house steward. Unfortunately, the damage to the castle interior was quite a bit of any fireplaces there are. was required to restore the castle interiors to their previous splendour.
Oh, there is little corners. What's this, Jim? Oh, it's a fire extinguisher. So I suppose that was kept filled, and there's a the bucket. <laughs> is that a fire hose there? Oh, look at this. For the children. Little high chairs, look. I was going to buy one of them just for the novelty appeal. I've got a house like that at home. Again, just for the novelty appeal. And look, I always wanted my kids to have a rocking horse like that. Look at that. I don't know who that is, but you can actually get up right close to this bed. Lord Roberts, there he is getting ready for the dinner party. Look, he can't have been that important because he's doing his own tie. Lord Roberts was an avid military man. He was awarded the Victoria Cross in 1858 for his service during the 1857 Indian Rebellion. His suit jacket and all his bits and pieces. I'm going to touch this. Round it. This mattress is horsehair. Can you hear that? That's horsehair. I'm going to start in the one now. Oh, look outside. What river is that? Yeah, Ivan. Sure. River Ivan. I'm going to stop this because I'm at 12. 